Welcome to Dr. Paul Marshall Science Talk. Dr. Paul has been studying martial arts for over 40 years. Dr. Paul's constant study of the human sciences and the physics of living has earned him three PhDs and is always looking to educate one's knowledge to understanding. Now welcome Dr. Paul Dyer Grandmaster. Yeah, welcome to Dr. Paul Martial Arts Science Talk. I'm glad to be with you here again for another show. You know, when we talk about martial sciences, we like to talk again about what it does for our lives, our internal and external, what's the real practice of it. And that's what we do like to do here on the AMA Martial Arts Radio Network. You know, we are trying to bring you again enough information where you can use it in your practice. I'll be talking with Grandmaster Daryl Smith. He is a world record holder. And we'll get right into the interview because I'm going to have him on the line here pretty quick. So if any of you have any questions, you want to contact me and want to find out more about what we're talking about, you can always email me at drpaulwdyer at gmail.com. That's D-R-P-A-U-L. W D Y E R at gmail dot com, and so let's bring him on the line here real quick. Doctor Paul Dyer, Grandmaster Dyer, I got Grandmaster Daryl Smith here with me, and we're going to talk about the martial sciences, about striking and energy. You know, I, if you want to talk to a person that's been doing breaking and energy strikes and chi strikes for a very long time and is in the world record books, this is the man you ought to listen to. Um, just many things in our lives that have connected us and, and brought us together in our lives and not only sharing a passion for the arts, but for life and family and the existence of taking care of others. So, so uh, Grandmaster Daryl, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then we'll go right into the education piece, okay? Okay. Okay, I'm a uh, married man, got a grandkid, six grandkids. I got four. I got <laughs> Got a wonderful uh, son, and uh, I, I had a hard life at one point, but now I got a good. You know, I grew up in a rough neighborhood at one time, and uh, I overcame some obstacles uh, getting into martial arts that made me a better person instead of going the wrong direction in life. And, Would you uh, say martial arts saved your life? Pretty much. It, it, it uh, brought me in the right direction. I grew up without a father. You know, I had a mm. mother. And uh, actually, my mother's uh, boyfriend, uh, the one that introduced me to the martial arts. And this was the time during uh, Green Hornet when it came out in 1966. And then it stopped 1967. They actually made 26 episodes of the Green Hornet. And that really inspired me, really brought up my uh, interest of getting into martial arts. And uh, the martial arts really done a lot for me. It made me believe in myself a lot. I used to be a very low uh, self-esteem kid. I was uh, behind my uh, brother and sister in school. But as I progressed into martial arts, the, uh, my instructor said, you have to uh, believe in yourself. You train hard. You build your character. And you can go a long, long way in life with that. Now, now, many kids, you know, uh, the sad thing I find about so many kids, especially in different types of neighborhoods or environments, is that the parents either feel like they can't afford it, the kids don't find a way to get there, or they just don't see it as a viable option to save their lives. And we want to be there. As martial artists, that's exactly why we want to be there. We want to be there 
because it does change lives. It changed my life too. And it's not a martial arts out there that hasn't changed their lives, that's for sure. But um, I, I know we gotta get to different communities. We gotta work a lot harder to get them to say that you too can be something and believe in yourself. I do believe that. That's correct, yes. And uh, at one time when I was in, the, in class, I couldn't afford it, but I was doing so well, the instructor, um, said, well, if you uh, sweep the floors and stuff, he said, good as you're doing, I want to keep, I want to keep you. And uh, he lowered my price down to like $10 a month. This was years ago. And uh, from there, it was guys that landed with me. Now, um, from those, from that moment then to, just just talk about the world records you hold. Let's just go through a couple of those and then we'll get into the next. But talk about the world records you hold and why do you, why you, why you went after them? Okay. Uh, uh, my seafood, cause I took gum food before as well in Chicago. My seafood, uh, Lee Edmonds, uh, worked with me for many years with doing that. Starting off with, uh, breaking boards, starting off with uh, blank meditation, and then learn to train the mind mm. and learn to control your blood flow and your breathing, mm. along with uh, beating on the beanbags, conditioning, and using Ditta Jai on your hands so you don't get bone spurs and so forth. And uh, the sad thing about my... Um, Seafood. One day he was working on the house, he fell off the ladder and got killed. Oh my goodness! So I said I'm gonna do this for him. I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna take the training that he showed me, controlling my inner energies, my blood flow, and I actually could slow my heart down on my own. And so what I did was decide to do. Uh, a break that nobody has done. And you have to really believe in that you can do it too, but along with the training. The world record uh, people came at my house, actually out in the parking lot. And they asked uh, me, was it okay? I said, it was okay to do it here. They, um, they checked the materials with sensors and you put the uh, flashlight on it and everything. Make sure there was no cracks. There was no cracks. Uh, we set up the uh, the block. And what I did is went into a deep uh, concentrating, uh, rooting myself into the earth. The uh, people that know uh, Kung Fu and so forth, they, they know what I'm talking about. Root yes, sir. Yes, sir. Into the, into the earth, become part of the earth. I made my body uh, heavy like like lead, controlling the blood flow. And I brought my hand down. It don't look like I brought my palm down, but 110 miles per hour plus. And I was looking at the ground, wasn't looking at the block. And I hit the uh, top block and made my energy travel to the center block. And then they looked, they said there's nothing broken. I removed the top one. The second one was weak. Turned it over, tapped it three times, it fell apart the pieces. And the guy uh, said, wow, that's unbelievable. When he actually touched my hand, I shocked him. That's how high my energy was up at that uh, particular time. But I always say, you know, you got to really believe in yourself to uh, go after these records and then I uh, got to another point I want to set another world's record and I got into uh, one inside my house with 66 inches of uh, cinder block concrete big old heavy mm-hmm. blocks and uh, they said that couldn't be couldn't been done 
So I did the same thing. I did the blank meditation. Didn't even think about the block. And uh, controlling my, my blood flow. And I actually uh, brought it up so high, my uh, blood pressure even went high. And when I went to hit uh, these blocks, I don't even remember until uh, I've seen myself on video. I made the, my energy go down halfway through. Yeah, one block broke into pieces. Actually, the bottom block all the way on the bottom was cracking three or four. So I just laid that one down. But uh, I went after these world records at age 52. I thought I didn't have it in me to do it. And so I remember what my uh, people used to tell me. You got to believe in yourself. And it's the same go for these uh, kids that they train hard. They get into uh, Qigong, the, the yeah. internal, the way of power. With that system, it teaches you the internal and power and blood flow. And along with, if you condition properly, you do anything. It, there's, you know, because I, I practice a lot of internal Qigong and medical Qigong and external. And I do some Bagua and Xing Yi. And I, I have yet to have a student that wants to really train and understand the breathing techniques. Because that drives me crazy a lot of times, you know, these people who, <laughs> I just, I'm not, you know, I'm not into um, bashing anyone, but I, I wonder what they're doing in exercise, but they're not doing an internal art where the organs are moving and the blood flow moves differently to the organs, to the liver, and to the heart, to the spleen, to the bladder. It, it, there, there's different breathing techniques and different move techniques that gets them there. And they're not teaching that in these other classes that say they are teaching that. And that bothers me. So, let's... And that is... Let's, that is true. Go ahead. What do you think, sir? I said that's correct. That is true. They're not uh, a lot of uh, people not uh, teaching it no more. And the uh, Chinese, they uh, they they kind of funny about that too. <laughs> yeah, they, they they well they kind of keep it. Well, they don't kind of. They do. I just been fortunate enough to live in China and study um, at the monastery. And that's where I developed my stronger part of it more than anything I was in Hunan. So now let's get into the science of it, sir. Let's see if you can explain when you talk about controlling your blood flow. See if you can help explain that science to the student listening. Okay, that would be a difficult one for them to understand. Uh, okay, like one example. If you uh, breathe slow and move in your stomach slow and you're pressing on a hard wall like you're trying to move it, that's one way of channeling your blood flow up and your energy to where your hand is it's like an isometric metric type of uh, controlling on that uh, particular blood flow. And then there's exercise that make your blood move. So when you breathe, you can uh, control your blood flow by breathing in and out slowly and moving your arm up and down real slowly. So, it, it, you know, when... So let's help these. Let's help the others try to understand this. But what what Grandmaster Darrow is talking about is there. Now, can you explain the breathing technique? Is are are you letting it rise up and over, or is it staying in your bottom low and down chin? Like, can you want to explain that breathing technique, and then we can get into the other facets of it. Okay, the one breathing technique, you can uh, inhale real hard, hold it, 
and exhale very slowly. And the, and the way that if you want to train to be able to do this, you also have to, uh, you can take a kata, like some of the uh, katas, like the, uh, the Sai Chen katas or the, uh, the uh, slow form. You could inhale, exhale while you're moving. That'll help your blood actually circulate through your body. Now, when I teach the breathing techniques, I actually have them connect the tongue to the top of the roof and then to the bottom of the of the teeth, just to connect those two um, in and out points in the mouth. So the, the nose. So are you breathing in? But because uh, I know it seems simple to you, but are you breathing into your nose or are you breathing into your mouth? Which one? I'm going through the nose and out. Uh, with the mouth, okay. inhale, exhale, and you do hold your tongue up at the uh, because yeah. you got to have the uh, like a, a tunnel coming around the tongue going down into the uh, body. Back right. So, and, and these are these, and this is why I'm asking. So, I'm one of these because for, for a lot of the students or people or whoever, it doesn't matter who you are who wants to listen to these podcasts, and I'm doing this for educational prosperity so you can always have it, so you can always refer back to it, because we're not here to, I'm personally not here to say how well I am or how well the, uh, these people I have on. I want them to help teach you so you can have this, because for many years, I just don't think there's enough Good teachers. There are some amazing, amazing men and women out here. But hopefully this podcast will find you a part of your practice. And then you can supplement your practice and keep on moving forward in your journey and your travels in the martial sciences and the martial arts. So, 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 so now as you're breathing in and out, what does rooting feel like to you? When you are sinking into the ground, then your body becomes, for me, it feels like the earth or whatever is coming up and surrounding me. Like um, I become part of the grass and I become the tree. And, and it just, that's how it, it just, I literally feel like I'm in the earth. So, but for you, yeah, that's, how I, that's how I feel because my uh, legs feel like roots are growing down into the ground. And you cannot move me. Now, how how long how long do you think a process like that to take for a person who wants to say, "I want to feel that" and what they're talking about? What is some of the things that they can start looking for so they can, you know, that process that they know they're going in the right direction? Well, the best thing I recommend is find you a good instructor that teaches uh, basically the Qigong because that's what they would teach you how to do is how to root and how to do certain ways like doing certain forms certain forms means the wind some means the ocean some means the mm-hmm. fire and they would show you how to uh, make the proper stance do the, the correct breathing and if you know how to do all that correctly, then if you breathe correctly and, and your stance is correctly and you hold your posture and everything correctly, you can root yourself into the ground. And no yeah, because it, yeah. most people don't, I mean, while you're listening to this, there's there's such thing called fire stances and water stances and wind yeah. and earth stances and there are breath techniques that go along with the stances and movement and that's, again, the one thing I keep trying to tell, I want to tell people when they ask me, what do you teach? I said, one, I teach the martial science. They're like, what style is that? I said, <laughs> I said, oh, first, look, I said, learn the science before you learn a style. You can always develop your own, you develop into a style, but if you don't know what one plus one is two, that's basic math. Now you can study any mathematical problem after that, but you got to first learn numbers, equations, and basics, you know, learn the science of it first before you you develop. 
So, one, there's not too many Qigong instructors out there. And the Qigong instructors that, that say they're out there, I, I would love to meet them, you know, and I, it's kind of like I, you know, I know we're, we're both on the Grandmasters um, Council, and I know there's a lot of schools I want to go out to and start closing doors. And then, and, and I know we can't do that in the United States because it's whatever, but I, I just, but, if a student doesn't have a good Qigong instructor, what is something that they, they can look for and know, understand that they're on the right path? Well, first of all, if they go to a school, I think they have the right to ask uh, for the instructor's information, their background and stuff like that, so they can know they want to get a good instructor to, you know, and they can do research on that instructor as well. He, where he learned from and who his instructor. Because what I found out now today, a lot of these instructors ain't what they say they are. And uh, that's, that's, that's very sad in this today's time. So I recommend that they do their research first. Um, that instructor and their instructor, maybe they can go beyond their instructor. Mm-hmm. Find out the, the, the history of them. To find out what kind of instructor you want to have. Now, yeah. you run several council boards. Now, you develop a lot. Develop these council boards, council boards for organizations worldwide and just literally globally. And there's some amazing men and women out here, like I said, and they're teaching some amazing, beautiful arts. And we just want to let people know that there, there's some people out here who are the real deal. And so don't fret, be weary. Um, sometimes I say, if, you know, if you want to study and you happen to be someplace and you listening to this, give us a call. We'll put you in the right direction. And if you don't know, we will find someone who does know, who who knows. You know what I mean? So yeah, but I can Marshall a person a good Qigong instructor or a good uh, meditation instructor. I know, you know, I know some good ones. Yeah, this I always have to tell people: the martial art community is very small when you do the real, because it's like, oh, definitely I know your teacher, definitely I knew your student, or definitely it's just it's a real small family, so. Hey, can I share something you're gonna laugh about? When I was at no, the go ahead. When I was at the banquet, yeah. One guy said, "What rank you are?" I said, "Does that matter?" <laughs> I said, look, if you look at my belt, the belt tells you what it is. I said, "No, yeah. I don't have no stripe on it." But I said, "You want me to explain to you what my belt means?" He wouldn't say. He said, that's okay. I was going to explain it to him. But the, the belt, you and I know what the red stand for anyway. Mm-hmm. Like blood achievement in, in the art and heat. But the gold on it stands for wisdom and knowledge. Mm-hmm. So, I, uh, you know, I'm a very quiet person. I'm very, you know, low-key. I walk around, observe, and learn because I'm always a student in the art as well, learn. Yeah. Right, the forever student. I always tell people that, and uh, it's funny, young students, young people, not young in age, but just, and I, and I don't mean, when I, often when I say young student, I mean they're young in the arts. And I said, we're always the forever student. We're learning, we're practicing, we're living. It's, it's, the other stuff is just stuff, but we're always really, truly the student of life. <laughs> now to get back to get back to the science real quick, what is the one thing you would think you would t- tell a young person who wants to work on their balance and chi and energy that they first must acquire what? The, is it the they breath must, or the, the balance? They must first acquire correct breathing, correct stance, mm-hmm. and uh, that way they can direct, uh, learn to get correct uh, coordination. And if you not uh, got those 
in the right order, you won't be able to get it. So, and that's funny. Um, it's you're right about that. It, there is a sequence to how the puzzle gets put together in a strong sequence, but just true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Grandmaster Daryl Smith, I want to say thank you uh, for coming on this uh, interview call with me for the martial arts science and for the end. Oh, no problem, Grandmaster. No problem. It's a blessing, brother, and, and I know we're we're always in connection. But um, if people want to get a hold of you, they'll have to come through me, and I'll direct them to you and say, "Hey, someone heard the show and they have a question." All right, sir. Okay. Anything I can pass on in the future to let me know, and what I have to say, uh, you know, believe in yourself, go after your dreams, train very hard, and you can do anything. God bless you, brother. God bless you too, sir. You have been listening to Dr. Paul. If you have any questions or comments, please contact him at drpaultire at gmail.com or 7013881899. Now back to Dr. Paul and Marshall Science. Know that we are always here to guide you on your way. And know that you can always contact me and uh, uh, on the martial arts science uh, AMA Martial Arts Masters Radio Network, and you can also listen to me on my weekly Monday broadcast. That's on iHeart's and iTunes Radio on the BBM Global Network. The reason why I call it bridges, even on the martial science talk, is to get you from here to there. And being, it's not my here, it's not my there. It's your here to your there. We're all in certain places in our time. And we all are getting to another place, and it takes a practice. The living science is the living practice. Um, like Grandmaster Daryl Smith said, and it, the brother is, the, the, believe in yourself. We don't maybe say that enough because we hope you do. We know that you think you do, but you have to practice, practice believing in yourself. Forgive yourself in any times you have out there. You know, this week, it's Thanksgiving week. So um, whether something can remind you of what you're going through, something can direct you of where you're going to, and people travel. But if you're a martial artist and you're a martial science practitioner, you're always traveling on your journey. You have your tools. You have your apron. You get into the you get into the good works of people and yourself, and that is what you call building the the human amazing universal love of wall. So I want you to dig into your practice, dig into your self love practice, dig into that believing in yourself practice, like Daryl Smith, Grandmaster Daryl Smith was talking about. Because only in, until then you're able to achieve. You know. Stop focusing on what can I achieve and start focusing on your intent of you believing in yourself and your love of oneself. Because only then achievements shall come, whatever those achievements will be, those sights. And I do believe that. It's been good. It's been a blessing. And you'll be listening to Dr. Paul and Bridges on the AMA Martial Arts Masters Radio Network. And like again, you can catch me on the BBM Global Network every Monday at 8 p.m. Channel 200 or iHeart's iTunes Radio. Also, you can catch the podcast. The show is Bridges, and I'm here to help you. And namaste and love to all. You have been listening to Dr. Paul. If you have any questions or comments, please contact him at drpaultire at gmail.com or 7013881899. Now back to Dr. Paul and Marshall Science. God bless.